Hey everyone, Charlie here from the Atomic Age, and today we're checking out Counter-Strike 2. Counter-Strike has always featured some nuclear maps uh, in the various iterations of the game. There's D-Nuke, which takes place in a nuclear power plant, and then there's D-Train, which involves the transport of a nuclear package. The uh, the presentations of these nuclear maps in Counter-Strike have gotten better over the years. I remember first playing this game about 20 years ago, and you had to download uh, Steam with a game back in the, back in the day there. Anyway, for today, let's take a look at the nuclear maps in Counter-Strike 2. Here we are in D-Nuke, and this um, this map takes place at a nuclear power plant. Right here on the back of this truck here, we actually have a, uh, a radioactive shipping package with a very accurate looking label. However, there are no contents listed, there's no activity listed and there is no transport index. So this is an incomplete uh, radioactive shipping label, but it is uh, pretty cool to see. It's pretty accurate. All right, so as we approach uh, this part of the map, we can see over here we got a big cooling tower. Ah, I don't know, I don't know. This is a cooling tower. This only releases steam. Some people think this is smoke, but no, this releases steam. All this is doing is getting some excess heat out of the nuclear power plant. Over here we have the containment building. This encapsulates the reactor and this is designed to withstand all the water in the reactor turning to steam because the reactor has water at very high pressure on the order of like 2000 PSI, several dozens of atmospheres. So this building is meant to withstand all that water turning into steam if it were to leak out of the reactor. This is what we have been for. Why am I playing with bots, you might ask? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't feel like trying to figure out how to get rid of them, so we're good. We're gonna go with it. Uh, back here, you can see the control room for the reactor. It's kind of a, uh, yeah, it's kind of just like dials and switches on the wall or, or or whatever. It's not really very detailed. It's of course not the focus of the game, but yeah, there's the old control room there. All right, now we're entering the containment dome building. It's pretty small there's like a there's a cap on it for some reason can't see the top of the containment building uh we got a what looks like a spent fuel cask up there perhaps there should be like a reactor like right in the middle <laughs> of this building here that's what the point of the containment dome is but yeah this looks like some kind of spent fuel cask up on the crane there spent fuel is very radioactive so you got to put it in this very big these very big bulky containers to contain all the radiation all right, so yes, this is the, this looks like the spent fuel pool. All right, guys, this is Charlie of the Atomic Age as I'm editing this video. This cast thing in the middle, which I think is what is in the rest of this power plant, I cannot figure out what this thing is. It is not spent fuel. Fuel assemblies don't look like that. They're square or hexagonal. Uh, and either way, they'd be inside like a metal sheath inside of like their own containers i don't know what this thing is so <laughs> if you happen to know what this thing is please let me know in the comments below and now let's get back to it this looks like the spent fuel pool there's some light coming from the bottom it's much too bright so it has that characteristic blue glow which is called cherenkov radiation now spent fuel is very radioactive the radioactive particles it gives off actually produce what is analogous to like a sonic boom in water and the particles are actually going faster than the speed of light in water that's an important caveat so the speed of light in water is about 75% as fast as it is in vacuum. So these radioactive particles that get emitted by the spent fuel are briefly going faster than the speed of light in water. So they give off that blue glow. It is a sonic boom underwater, very analogous. And then if you look over there, we can actually see the reactor core with the head taken off. But this is not in the right spot. It should be in that containment building over there. But you really have to kind of get over there and look for it. But yeah, there you go. And just to be clear with the reactor down there, you know, that's where all the nuclear magic happens. You put the head back on that on that vessel and you, you smash some atoms inside there, make some heat, spins a turbine. That waste heat goes to that cooling tower we saw earlier. It has this very deep pool here because this slot, you can take fuel out of the reactor, move it underwater, and then put it in the spent fuel storage pool, all without having to take it above the water because water is a pretty good pretty good radiation shield it's it's liquid so you know it can form to your radioactive contents and uh it's pretty light and you can you know pump it in and out so when the reactor is operating uh this will be pumped down a good bit and those fuel assemblies are kind of weird looking oh no get out of here 
trying to talk nuclear science. All right, if we come over to A, it looks like we got some more of these spent fuel casts here. Some transfer casts to hold the spent fuel. What has been missing so far is uh, the turbine hall. We've not seen a turbine. I don't think there is one here. And if we come over to the counter-terrorist spawn, we have the ISFSI, the ISFSI. This is the independent spent fuel storage installation. And this is where the spent fuel from the reactor is stored. These are all uh, passively cooled systems. They're all air-cooled. I gotta defend the ISFSI. So this fuel has, is, is no longer useful in the reactor, so you store it out here until, well, until they can find a place to store it if you're here in the United States. A place for that has not been sent up, set up yet, but this is how it's stored right now. Each power plant has one of these spent fuel storage pads. All right, and we are now here on D train, which has some some nuclear stuff in, <laughs> in here. This is a uh, <laughs> uh, rather silly looking, just like a crate with a giant uh, trefoil on it, the radioactive symbol. And then it has like these weird sides to it as almost if like they're vents or something. Oh, and we got a dosimeter too down here. Oh God, am I surrounded by terrorists? So yeah, these are incredibly silly. If we look back at that package from D-Nuke, these are just, yeah, completely, completely silly. Oh, I guess I should defuse the bomb here. All right, and then if we come over here to B, we got some more nuclear containers over here. Seemingly, we got crates with like a another radioactive symbol on it, but again, a bit of a lazy one. <laughs> Not as good as the one in D-Nuke. And then as far as like what's in here, this looks like some kind of like generator or giant diesel engine or something. Certainly does not look like a nuclear material cask. All right, yeah, I believe that'll be it for D-Train there. Just those two, those two train cargos there with the, the silly, silly logos on them. But it's really kind of there for the purpose of telling the players like, okay, this is the bomb site. Let's put the bomb here. All right, everyone, so there you go. We got D-Nuke and D-Train from Counter-Strike 2 here. D-Nuke, very decent portrayals of nuclear technology to nuclear power plant. Uh, much more detailed and accurate than D-Train, and that's probably because in D-Nuke it's all just kind of set dressing, whereas in, like, D-Train, it was kind of just like this <laughs> cartoony, obnoxiously large trefoil radiation symbols, and then it was more about, you know, telling the player, okay, this is a a bomb site that you can place the bomb for the gameplay purposes. Interesting to take a look at, of course, does not detract away from the enjoyment that you could have in playing Counter-Strike. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.